An estimated 146 million shipping containers were transported globally in 2011. According to the UN, merchant ships contribute more than $380 billion in freight rates to the world economy annually. With so much money at stake, companies are putting ever more pressure on the seaborne trade industry to deliver a faster service without compromising quality. Here to explain how the world's largest inland port can help businesses meet these expectations is Erich Starke, CEO and President of Duisport, which recently won the World Finance Award for Best Port Development 2012. Erich, welcome. Thank you. How would you explain the success story of Duisport? Good question. I guess uh, two major key points. One is uh, uh, we tried to build the leading logistic hub in, in Europe. That means concretely uh, the combination of maritime cargo out of many, many seaports um, combined with uh, domestic cargo out of the region because that's the strongest industrial conurbation in Europe where Duisburg is located. Second key point, I guess, our business model. Um, we are not only a typical landlord on one hand, which is the core business of, of, of every port, but we are also a logistic uh, service provider. Very often in partnership with our clients, clients means more than 300 um, um, 300 clients which are, which are using the, the ports for in, in, in different fields. What services are offered and what type of technology does this port use to deliver these services? Well, services for instance in, uh, in the logistics, um, building intermodal concepts um, for the optimization of the supply chains and transportation chains of our client. Good example might be Duisport Rail, which is working like a, like a feeder rail company, um, linking the different factories uh, with uh, dedicated rail links to Duisburg. Uh, we are involved in the packing logistics, IT-based. Um, we are packing um, big plants, chemical plants, uh, fertilizer plants throughout the world. Uh, we are supporting our clients when uh, they are building warehouse capacities and so on. We make the planning, we, 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 we accompany it in the building process. So uh, different activities and a whole variety of acti activities in the logistics. Can you talk us through some of the key trade routes that these ports serves? And also, what are your plans to expand your international efforts? Well, the, the major focus was for sure Europe. Um, um, and. Uh, in the past uh, three, four years, we very much concentrated on the eastern part. Um, so it was a big advantage to start the first direct rail link to Moscow. Uh, in the meantime, we are serving by rail uh, China. Uh, uh, it's the so-called transcontainer line. Uh, there's a direct uh, train twice a week to Chongqing. In our globalized world, it has become more and more international. Uh, and uh, what we are trying to do to concentrate, especially in the in the areas or in the in the countries, in the emerging markets, where the uh, industrial production is taking place. It's not only China, but India, Brazil, Russia are important, and uh, these are the major markets where we want to want to invest and want to link uh, our network. You consider your customers to be more than just clients, more as partners. Tell me why businesses should consider a strategic partnership with Dsport. If you want to make it right and if you want to be successful in logistics, you have to define logistics as international networking. It's, 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 it's all about networking. And, and networking means you, you, you should have a behavior and a very concrete vision to to, to, to build supply chains in partnership. It's very, very uh, rare that, that you find uh, e even the big uh, uh, giants in the field who can control everything, the whole supply chain. Uh, and what we are trying to do is, as a solution provider, which is more or less neutral, which is not going to the, to the, to the shippers, the ones who are paying the bill finally, and say, we can do everything. So it's not, it's not a question how big our share in the supply chain is all about. Uh, it's, it's, it's much more the focus that it works and that it starts and that we, we, can, we, can, we can build it via Duisburg. 
Tell me, what role does sustainability play within the company's philosophy? It's a, it, 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 it has, uh, has become uh, uh, playing a big role uh, a decade ago. A good example is, is, is our, um, the acquisition of an old steel site. So Krupp, a very famous name in steel production, uh, uh, had decided at the end of the 80s to, to finalize its, its uh, steel production um, in, in, a, in a very big site. It was, by the way, a very modern uh, steel uh, factory. So we took over, the, uh, we acquired this land and ground, 300 hectares, huge area in the center of, 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 of Duisburg. It was contaminated, heavily contaminated. Um, and now it, it has become the most modern logistic hub in, 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 in Europe called Lockport. But also on a daily basis. Uh, if, you, if you transfer truck transportation to rail or to barge, it's always a contribution to sustainability. Uh, but also if you are investing in, in, in modern technology, crane technology, um, and transportation technology in your terminals, for instance, it's another field. So many, many, many different areas and therefore we have a responsible manager who's, who's uh, reporting directly to me. So you see, we, I have it in my mind. And finally, tell me, where are you heading? Where do you see yourself in terms of expansion and growth? So as far as our business model is, is concerned, we are good positioned. Uh, all the different areas have growth potential, that's, that's important. Um, in, as far as the markets are concerned, I was, as I was mentioning the BRIC states. Now we are, we are talking the, the, the new area of, of emerging markets like Turkey and Indonesia and, and Mexico. So we have to check uh, uh, what, what are they doing, how the industrial production, the cargo streams are being in, uh, happening in, in, these, in, in these countries. Um, we are also looking into the region uh, outside Duisburg. So I made a, I built a joint venture with RAG, which, which is our domestic coal expo uh, exploration uh, company. But the federal government decided to get rid of domestic coal exploration uh, till the year two, 2018. So there are a lot of areas available and we want to uh, be involved in that, in, in that process. Erich Starke, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, it was a great pleasure.